Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we are going to talk about load balancers. So, what are load balancers and why do you have to know about them? Let's say you are preparing for an upcoming interview, maybe with one of the tech giants or you just want to have an informed discussion with one of your colleagues in the office about how to make your application more resilient, scale them horizontally, this video is for you. So keep on watching. Let's start with a funny story. Let's say if tomorrow you come up with a brilliant idea and you build your own website, you give it a domain name, say abc.com and then you start selling stuff on that. Initially, you don't have many users. So you run it on your lo local laptop and it works fine. But then the product that you were selling becomes very famous and tens of thousands of users start coming to your website. Now that poor laptop you were running your site on can't handle tens of thousands of lo user load and it starts crashing and you start losing money. So that is when the load balancers can come to your rescue. Load balancer is how we can efficiently distribute incoming network traffic across a group of backend servers. Let's call it a server pool. So how load balancers work? So now that you have all this money from your website, you decide to scale your website horizontally and you start adding more servers and you add a load balancer on top of the server pool. So any client of yours that comes to your site through internet ultimately lands on the load balancer and the load balancer depending on many very criteria can send your traffic to any of the servers that is under its control. Let's talk about couple of load balancing algorithm that might come handy to you. Let's start with round robin. So round robin requests are distributed across the group of servers sequentially. Let's say you have two servers in your load balancer pool. So the first request will land to server 1, the second request will land to server 2, the sec third request will again go back to server 1 and so forth. The second one that we will talk about is list connection. So a new request is sent to the server that is with the fewer current requested connections. The relative computing capacity of each server is factored into determining which one has the least connections and load balancer will send the request to that server. The third one we will talk about is the least response time method. So whichever server is returning the response in least amount of time, load balancer will keep track of that and will send the request to that particular server. The fourth one is a pretty uncommon but it is called the IP hash. It is also a little complicated so we will not discuss about it but this is just for your knowledge that this is one of the algorithm that your load balancer can use. We will talk about couple of load balancing benefits now. The first benefit that load balancer gives us is scalability. In our example we saw we started our website with only one server and as and when the website will grew and generated more revenue we were able to add more server and were able to serve our users better so what load balancers gave us it gives us increased scalability the second point is redundancy and efficiently manage failures so now that we have four servers in our load balancer pool for some reason if one of the server go down or we have to take it down for maintenance there will be three more servers serving the users. So your website won't have to die and the load balancer will still be able to efficiently manage your users among the other three active servers. The third benefit that comes with load balancer is reduced downtime and increased performance. So serve application runs on servers. So for so many reasons, we might have to take, your, take the server down for performance reasons or maintenance reason for adding the new version of the software there can be so many of them but since we have so many servers in the load balancer pool we can take one server at a time out of the pool perform all the maintenance on them and then add them back and take another server out for maintenance 
users will not at all notice it. Because if you have four servers in the load balancer pool and one server goes out of the pool, there will be three, three servers serving all your users. So your user experience will still be seamless. Increase flexibility. Load balancer gives us enormous flexibility. You can take your server down for maintenance, server can go down due to user load or maybe so many other reasons. But load balancer will still be able to give your user a very good user experience. And that's all about it. We have talked about so much about the benefit of having a load balancer. It might have already given you an idea that what if the load balancer itself goes down? What will happen to your website? Just to get you out of the worry, we can have a load balancer cluster where we can have a load balancer and a backup load balancer. Whatever the active load balancer knows about the servers in the pool, the passive load balancer will also have the same information. And these two load balancer will keep on pinging each other just to know that the active load balancer is still working and it's healthy. For some reason, if the active load balancer goes down, the passive load balancer will get to know about it from its health check and will immediately take over all the traffic so that your users can still talk to one of the, one of the servers seamlessly and can have no knowledge about the load balancer not being available anymore. This will get you out of the situation of having a single point of failure. Let me give you a bit of a trivia at the end of this video. You might be wondering, we've talked about a small website handling couple of thousands of users, but how do Google and Amazon with billions of users handle their load? They don't use a load balancer. They use a Global Server Load Balancing or GSLB that allows them to distribute their traffic originating from different part of the world to different load balancer. So let's say they have a data center living in US East Coast, US West Coast, then one in Australia, one in Africa, one in India, one in China. So when any request comes, it lands on the GSLB and GSLB decides the origin location of where the request is originated from and send it to the nearest data center to the user. So the user can communicate with the server efficiently and fast. For some reason, one data center goes down, the other data centers take over. So that is how such large scale companies like Google and Amazon gives us such good customer experience.